Many people think that the war on drugs was launched in response to the crack epidemic. The truth is that President Ronald Reagan officially announced the war in 1982 before crack became an issue in the media or a crisis in poor black neighborhoods. A few years after the war on drugs was declared, crack began to spread rapidly in poor black neighborhoods of Los Angeles and later emerged in the cities across the country. The Reagan administration hired staff to publicize the emergence of crack cocaine in 1985 as part of a strategic effort to build public and legislative support for the war. Overnight, the media was saturated with images of black crack whores and crack babies. In less than 30 years, the penal population exploded from around 300,000 to more than 2 million. The United States now have the highest rate of incarceration in the world, dwarfing the rates of nearly every developed country. Even the most oppressive regimes in the world don't compare to the United States of America's prison population. In Germany, 93 people are in prison for every 100,000 adults and children. In the U.S., the rate is about 750 for every 100,000. There is no other country in the world that incarcerates such a large percentage of their racial or ethnic minority groups, as does the U.S. The war on drugs was all about politics and winning the approval of white voters. After the Democrats saw how effective the racialized war was for white conservatives, they wrote out their own Get Tough on Drugs initiative. It is important to note that the war on drugs was not the only response to what was termed the crack epidemic. Other countries that were faced with rising drug crime or seemingly intractable rates of drug abuse and drug addiction chose a path of drug treatment during the same period. Portugal, for example, who responded to their drug problem by decriminalizing the possession of all drugs and redirecting the money that would have been spent putting drug users in cages into drug treatment and prevention, 10 years later saw a tremendous decrease in drug abuse and addiction. Portugal's approach more reflected what America is doing with their opioids epidemic when the drug users are now white. It may be surprising to some that drug crimes was declining, not rising when a drug war was declared. We all know what happened after the war was declared. During Clinton's tenure, Washington slashed funding for public housing by $17 billion, a reduction of 61%, and boosted corrections by $19 billion, an increase of 171%, effectively making the construction of prisons the nation's main housing program for the urban poor. The Rat Race Hundreds of years ago, our nation put those considered less than human in shackles. Less than 100 years ago, we relegated them to the other side of town. Today, we put them in cages. Once released, they find that a heavy and cruel hand has been placed upon them. Many people would think that because these people are labeled criminals, that they are much more deserving of this treatment. The truth is that the system had really only focused on criminalizing black and brown men, even when far more white people use and sell drugs. In America, one third of black men are jobless not because they don't want to work, and 65% of those with the label criminals are jobless, probably because they won't be able to find a job unless they are hired by someone they know. Some inmates can find themselves within a system after release where they have to surrender 100% of his or her earnings due to court fees, child support, and similar functions that garnish their paychecks making illegal work for them a more feasible means of survival. This is nothing new. Since the Civil War, 
Former slaves and their descendants were arrested for minor violations, slapped with heavy fines that they could not pay, and leased through convict leasing programs where they would never earn enough money to pay back those fines. The New Jim Crow Today, more black men have been disenfranchised than in the 1870s and is perfectly legal because they are labeled a criminal. Many white Americans aren't even aware that a war on drugs is still taking place in the black and brown communities. How it works. Through the war on drugs, an extraordinary number of black men are forced into the prisons. First, they are swept into the criminal justice system by the police who conduct drug operations primarily in poor communities of color. They are rewarded in cash through drug forfeiture laws and federal grants programs for rounding up as many people as possible. It is okay to use race to discriminate as long as race isn't the only factor for targeting young black men. For example, young and black is okay, baggy jeans and black is okay, and over 100 and black may not be okay. In all situations, being black was a key factor for the discrimination as long as they can prove it was not the only factor, then they are not violating our constitutional rights according to the courts. Once arrested, convicts are denied meaningful legal representation and regardless of innocence, pressured to plead guilty or face trumped up charges. For example, instead of a minimum sentence of 10 to 25 years, you will only serve three to five. Even an innocent person might take that deal knowing that they won't have a shot in court due to their poverty and color. Once released, they will face a lifetime as a second-class citizen, an undercast, because many of their rights are stripped away, voting rights, housing, employment, etc. Hindsight is 2020. One day, historians will look back at the system of mass incarceration and marvel that such an extraordinarily comprehensive system of racialized social control existed in the United States. They will likely say that a drug war was raged almost exclusively against poor people of color, people already trapped in ghettos that lacked jobs and decent schools. They were rounded up by the millions packed away in prisons, and are released, they were stigmatized for life, denied the right to vote, and ushered into a world of discrimination, legally barred from employment, housing, and welfare benefits, and saddled with thousands of dollars of debt. These people were shamed and consumed for failing to hold together their families. They were chastised for succumbing to depression and anger, and blamed for landing back in prisons. They would wonder how would we describe the new caste system as a system of crime control when it is difficult to imagine a system better designed to create rather than prevent crime. Thanks for listening. If you haven't seen the first or second parts on the Black Codes and the War on Drugs, make sure you check that out. Please like our video and subscribe to support our channel. And as always, love you and live your best life.